We love a real life rags to riches story and Ben Affleck's rise to superstardom is certainly that. Born into a working class family, Ben wanted to be an actor as far back as he can remember and he landed his first gig early, starring in a Burger King commercial before even hitting double digits. When he was eight, he met Matt Damon, who was two years his senior and lived down the road. He also dreamt of becoming a movie star. They became best friends, going to drama classes and playing Little League together, and as we all know, later becoming theatrical collaborators. But before success came their way, they were both struggling actors, flatting together and sick and tired of being overlooked for lead roles. So they decided to take action, writing their screenplay Good Will Hunting, giving themselves lead roles and also including Ben's younger brother, Casey Affleck. They found finances, sold the screenplay for $600,000 and produced the movie themselves. It was a huge success, grossing over $130 million, receiving 10 Oscar nominations and winning them the Best Original Screenplay Oscar. It also transformed them from struggling actors to A-list Hollywood golden boys. And what a sweetie, Ben took his mum as his date to the awards. You know, very few people get to, uh, you know, have experience of any kind of success at all in this business and I'm really lucky and I had this kind of experience with, with my best friend and with my brother and it's just, it's extraordinary, you know. Ben was instantly considered one of Hollywood's most promising young actors and the parts came flooding in. With the big and challenging roles, he quickly improved as an actor, starring in blockbusters Armageddon and Shakespeare in Love. It was around this time that his extracurricular activities made him a magnet for media attention. He started dating his Shakespeare co-star Gwyneth Paltrow. When they broke up, things just got hotter for the tabloids when he hooked up with the super sexy Jennifer Lopez. The pair's overexposed relationship was heavily criticised, many blaming Jennifer for persuading Ben to make a $1.5 million L'Oreal shampoo ad that damaged his tough guy image. Then there was their film Gearly, which is considered one of the biggest flops of all time. And the press frenzy heightened with the announcement that Affleck had proposed with a $3.5 million pink diamond engagement ring. However, in 2003, the marriage was suddenly called off, both blaming the media attention for the breakup. In 2005, he started dating his daredevil co-star Jennifer Garner. He'd learned from his mistakes, this time keeping his relationship private. After nine months they married, having a top secret ceremony in the Caribbean. Not even Matt Damon was invited because Ben feared the press would catch on. They now have two beautiful girls, Violet and Serafina. But let's not get too carried away with his love life. Whilst he became a mega celebrity, he can always rely on his castmates to bring him back to earth. You know, oh, did you do your own stunts or did you have a stunt man? Yeah. So they, uh, in Armageddon, I did all my own stunts. You, Bruce Willis, all oh, y'all left me, man. I just what? want to know what's up with you. what happens when your head gets big. See, we're this is the, what I mean. They're in the shadow. Like, you I know, have... I can't be doing my own stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got See, stunt men in this, in this they business. They were getting paid so much money that they, it was in their contract to have stunt people. I didn't have a stunt man. I thought man. you were looking to be a stunt man. Always one for a challenge and known for putting his all into the characters he plays, Ben mixes up his roles and cinematic genres. You name it, he's tried it. Comedies like Jersey Girl, dramas like Bounce and Dogma, thrillers like Reindeer Games, and epic blockbusters like Pearl Harbor. The real life historical relevance of Pearl Harbor had a big impact on Ben. I'm standing in a place where people were, you know, where this event actually happened. And then it became very profound for me. And after that, we went and did a a uh, attended a ceremony held at the Arizona and that made I mean there you're standing over the ship that was sunk and it's still there and you're looking at it it's still leaking oil it still feels very present and very it, it gives you a very strong sense of the the weight of the whole in incident the whole war and uh, and then that left me with very a very kind of reverential and odd feeling about being in that in that place at all. This blockbuster was no walk in the park. For authenticity, the actors had to do some seriously gruelling military training. And they put us through this sort of pre-range of training thing for a week. And it was easily the most gruelling and difficult physical experience, in some ways psychological experience, I've ever had to go through. To the point where 
I had no idea. I mean, I was, I was shocked that they put us in this, these actors, in something so arduous and difficult. And we were doing it alongside other military guys who were having a really tough time, who kind of confirmed, like, yeah, this is tough. And, um, but by the same token, it made it, left me with a real sense of achievement after having finished it. And it left me with a, it left me with an enduring respect for what the men and women of the United States military go through now on a daily basis. Fame was taking its toll, and in the same year he checked himself into rehab for alcohol abuse, echoing the same problems his father had with alcoholism. But he didn't let that get the better of him, moving forward with his career, taking on lots of different roles, some more successful than others. Fast forward to 2007, and like many actors, Ben decided to take on a new challenge, directing. After reading Dennis Lehane's novel Gone Baby Gone, Ben was hooked by the story. He acquired the rights, and despite having never written an adaptation before, went for it. And once finished, decided he wanted to direct it as well. It opened to rave reviews. So how did he find the directing process? I was very, very scared going into it. I was really nervous. I had obviously never been there. It caused me a tremendous amount of anxiety. You know, I got this terrible migraine at the end of the first week. Um, you know, just because I had prepped so hard and the first week was so much, it was just like, and it went good. It just went well. I just still it was this huge eruption of headache. I, and slowly I kind of warmed up and got comfortable, but it was just like a giant amount of stress and fear. And I felt like I wanted this to succeed so much that I, you know, you can only pour so much energy into something before you explode, you know? You can only work so hard. And I don't think I gave myself enough, like, of a release valve. Um, but ultimately, uh, I, I was okay. Still a low-grade anxiety that was there the whole time I was making it that didn't end until I got to post-production and I could kind of, I had all the footage and I was in the editing room and I could just relax a little bit and assemble it and try things and move around because you're always worried you're not going to make the day, you're not going to have enough time, you're running out of light, you know, your actors aren't there, or you're going to lose this person and, or these people are going to melt down. As you say, it's really frantic. Um, and I'd been on sets before, you know, so I really have a lot of, uh, empathy for like the writer director who's never even been around before shows up for the first time and you know that's why those people just have nervous breakdowns. With Ben being at the helm as director this meant he got to choose the cast and surprise surprise his brother Casey Affleck got a lead role. I've been surprised and very proud of Ben because he uh, I had never seen him as a director you know and he'd never worked on anything never directed anything else and he's done an incredible job of um, just in every way, you know, the movie looks great from what I've seen and the, um, he's kind of created an atmosphere that is very collaborative and fun and uh, yet professional and I think that he's earned the respect of everybody on the crew. Ben Affleck as a director is extraordinary. He has, uh, he's very hands-on, he's very caring with the actors and he um, is one of the most intelligent men I've ever met. Uh, his agility with language and the speed to get his points across is key, was key. And he obviously, he has a great experience as an actor. He knows um, where the pitfalls are in terms of when you don't have a good director. So he had every T crossed and every I dotted and took such great care of all of us from, from Ed Harris, Morgan Freeman, you know, to the day player, local non-actor. Back in front of the camera, Ben starred in the chick flick based on the best-selling book of the same name, He's Just Not That Into You. I like to take full credit for Ben being involved. Uh, no, I just love, I love him, I think he's great. And I think he was, you know, just seemed really right for the part. So I just kind of, think, threw the name out. Saw it, you know, if anybody caught it. In the same year, he starred in the political thriller State of Play as Congressman Stephen Collins. Even though Edward Norton had been the first choice for the role, Ben didn't let any ego get in the way and was happy to take the role when it was finally offered to him. Edward was playing the part and Brad Pitt was playing the part. And Brad left the movie and then the movie started post getting postponed because they didn't have another actor. And then by the time Russell came into the movie, um, Edward had another movie that he was doing, and so the schedules had crunched so much that he wasn't going to be able to shoot this movie and make it the next movie, so he was out. And uh, they called me and said, do you want to do this movie? Russell's, uh, Russell called me, and, and uh, the director called me and said, hey, come do it. And 
I said, you don't have to ask me twice. It's a great script and a great opportunity. And uh, I don't wanted to work with Russell. And there were a bunch of great other actors, Helen Mirren, Rachel McAdams, Robin Wright Penn, Jason Bateman. It was uh, quite a package. Actor, writer and director, Ben Affleck's rags to riches rise to superstardom has proven that if your dream gig doesn't land in your lap, go out and make it happen. Stay tuned to Star Picks for more of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.